An explosive Loudoun County, Virginia school board meeting over proposals including requiring school staff to use students' preferred gender, pronouns, and names. Two parents later arrested for allegedly refusing to leave the building after fierce public comments. Watch. Today, instead of focusing on the hate that seems to be dripping off the followers of Jesus in their room, in this room, and from their kids in our schools, I wanted to take the time. Oh wait. I can wait. I've noticed a pattern. You treat your bosses, most of us, like children. You treat the woke mob, your employees and teachers unions, like the boss. And you treat children who have not harmed you like pawns in your leftist social experiment. When you give us a timeout for clapping, uh, we hear you saying, look at me, I am the captain now. You're not the captain, we're your bosses, and God willing, we'll return most of you to the private sector very soon. You're teaching children to hate others because of their skin color. And you're forcing them to lie about other kids' gender. I am disgusted by your bigotry. And your depravity. Joe Mobley to be followed by Donna. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to end public comment. There's been a motion to end public comment. Is there a second? Thank you. The motion carries 9-0. Public comment is now ended. We will move to our next agenda. <laughs> Based on what transaction? What did I do wrong? Just put your hands behind your back for me, sir, please. What? Joe Concha, I tell you, uh, the, the thing that really stands out there, though, is when they shut that mic off, shut the people down, freedom of speech. What's your thought on, on how that plays a role in all of this? Hmm, apparently it wasn't the right speech, right, Harris? And, and look, the Loudoun County School Board is being called the wokest and worst school board in America by parents there, and for good reason. And for those who think that this is some deep red county, think again. Joe Biden got more than 60% of the vote in 2020 in Loudoun County. It's also a very active county. They're very involved. Nearly 80% of registered voters there actually voted in the 2020 election. That's obviously well above the national average. So, look, I'm a parent, and, and the number one topic at barbecues, and thank God we could go to barbecues again, and soccer games and softball games this summer, it's what's going on in schools in terms of what we're teaching our kids and where the focus lies. Because while we focus on race and privilege and sexual orientation and transgender, we're taking our eyes off the very things that prepare our children for adulthood. The U.S., all the money we spend and we allocate to the Department of Education, all the advanced resources that we have in this country, we don't even rank in the top 10 in science. We're 30th in math, Harris, 30th. And you want to know why U.S. companies turn to Asia and India when they want young adult workers instead of getting them from here from home? You have your answer because we're taking our eye off the ball. Those countries, those regions are preparing their kids for adulthood. And here we're focused on all those other things. And parents finally are clearly fed up. Morgan, Kaylee, two new moms, uh, and, and I say that because you are focused probably for the first time in your lives on what would I do, Morgan? Right. Well, I, I think it all comes down to a matter of choice for the parents, and, and here's what I mean by that. You know, school boards and teachers need to understand that they don't raise children parents raise children. Amen. And I think about Florida, where Kaylee and I are both from. You know, we've had school choice in Florida for over 20 years. And as I was watching, uh, Jeb Bush was actually talking about this earlier today, because he's the governor that brought in school choice. And as I was watching that Loudoun County exchange, I thought, this is why we need school choice, because I see a lot of frustrated parents who want to raise their children and who may not have a choice about where they send their kids to schools. We also saw this during the pandemic, COVID-19. 
the frustration that we see from parents is that they haven't been able to send their kids to school and then when they finally can send them to public school uh, they may be teaching them something that is just uh, in their minds an indoctrination also going back to florida governor ron DeSantis said today that he's going to require high school students he's putting a bill forward to be taught about the evils of communism and a totalitarian ideologies so over and over again i think uh, in our home state of florida uh, they're the governors are getting so, it right you know I, i'm curious how we got here did we just kind of quietly slide into this or did you mm -hmm. i mean with a former administration was this a talk was this a subject did you see us headed in this direction no it's a good question and no we didn't see it heading in this direction. I think this movement has been emboldened because now you have a Democrat president, a Democrat administration. Uh, they feel a little tailwind behind them, but it is a slow fade that's been happening in our schools and we've got to broaden this out to what all is going on outside of Loudoun County here in New York City, where parents were paying $55,000 to send their kids to the Dalton School. The kids, first graders, six year olds were showed a cartoon about self pleasure in their anatomy, six years old. This happened in Connecticut as well in Loudoun County, a Christian student was forced to basically sit in a broom closet because he didn't want to partake in this be taught about transgender policy that should be at home, not for the teacher to do. This is a very scary place in society where our kids are being taught a set of values and principles by their teachers when all they need is an education, which is why I say done with private school, done with public school, parochial school, because at my all girls Catholic high school, you wouldn't have been taught lectured more on morality like this. You know, it's interesting because the, the Supreme Court decision that came out today uh, it had to do with free speech by students. And the Supreme Court said, mm. quote, public schools are the nurseries of democracies here. Mm. And that's what, what flew in my head as you were speaking that. That's exactly right. She set the landscape well for what this board meeting is. And just to flush it out a bit further, so 259 parents and members of the community signed up to speak at that board meeting. 51 were allowed to speak. Yeah. Well, they no shut wonder, the mic down. Exactly. That's my point. No wonder parents are furious. Their voices aren't being counted in the decisions made about what to teach the kids and, and decisions how to affect the children. And now their voices aren't being heard. And also in that board meeting, parents were bringing up a lot of those issues. So it wasn't just about the critical race theory. They brought up the fact that the Christian child was held in a closet uh, while they were being taught about transgender policies. They brought up the fact that the, the school board has appealed the judge's ruling to reinstate teacher Tanner Cross, mm -hmm. who spoke up that transgender policies and issues when against his faith and certain um, consternations he had about that. They said, we want you to stop your appeal. Stop wasting our taxpayer dollars that our children are members of this district in doing so. They also brought up the fact that there are many of those uh, school board officials that are being recalled right now. The parent said, resign. We want our tax dollars to stop paying your salary and paying for this recall effort. There was even more. So there's a whole host of issues going on there in that toxic school board. Those parents are right on and I feel for all of them, especially now those that have arrest records. All right, we just got this in from Mike Emanuel, he's our chief Washington correspondent. He was actually at that meeting. He joined us on Faulkner Focus last hour. Uh, this just coming in. He wants to note the sheriff's department now says it was the Loudoun County school superintendent who declared the meeting an unlawful assembly. Huh. Now that's an interesting detail. I think we needed to know that. Uh, it directed attendees to leave the, the, the school superintendent and the board and advised those who stayed would be charged with trespassing. The sheriff's office wants to make it clear it was the superintendent calling the shots not law enforcement. Oh yeah, they it did it because to, the parents were shutting saying, it down. shame on you because uh, progressive left members of the community had basically doxed conservative members and published a, a record of where they lived in their names. That's what they were talking about at that moment when they said shame on you as the superintendent tries to shut it down. It, they're yeah. trying to silence these but conservative voices. It, it's so interesting because it gets pinned on the cops because they're the ones who do the arresting. But the questions now by local media in Virginia, and maybe it'll attract some network like our Mike Emanuel is there. The questions have to be asked of that school board now. Do you want parents to get involved or don't you? If you're going to grade their answers, what happens when you're wrong? Are you willing to take responsibility for your right or wrong decision? Sure, and now the parents can't even speak. So their kids are forced to be brainwashed with a certain set of morality that they should be taught at home. And in addition to that, now the parents can't even voice their complaints because interestingly enough, it was the superintendent who said, it's time to wrap this up. After six speakers voiced support for the transgender policies. Out of 250 on the bill, we heard from 51, as you said. But it's hard to shout with no yeah. microphone. Although I've done it a few times. <laughs>